Hey y'all, welcome to the Clock Tower. I'm Colton, here with Brandon. Lots of stuff to talk about today. A handful of things have been announced for Weiss in the last couple of weeks. Before we get to that, a bit of a programming note. Brandon and I were on Darcy's channel, Darcy of WCC. He hosts a podcast that Brandon and I were guests on last week. Link in the description to that. It was really fun. We got to talk about some stuff that we normally don't get to talk about on the show. Really fun conversation. Darcy's a cool guy. You should go and check that out. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. We had a chance to be able to just kind of talk about different things looking at Spring Fest looking forward. So, And our shared hope that Cade Cunningham is going to be good as a Detroit Piston. That was a thing that happened. So getting on with the actual news, in our last show, we talked about the announced Overlord reprint. And we thought that it was kind of an odd selection. And at one point we said, you know what would make more sense? If they reprinted Slime 1, because we're getting Slime 2. And I think Bushy Road watches the show, right? Because they actually did announce a Slime 1 reprint that is coming in March of 2022, Brandon. And Bushy Road, if you're listening, please bring Kobayashi to English. Please. If our opinion has any sway on things, I would really, really like that. That would mean a lot to me, so thank you. Um, that aside, March of 2022, <laughs> we're getting our Slime 1 reprint. Makes a lot of sense given that Slime 2 is coming out. Some of the older Slime stuff is, you know, expensive. I like this. I think it makes a ton of sense. Somebody priced out what the meta deck from Slime Set 1 would cost roughly. And it was something like $600 if you had to single it out. So I think having the Slime reprint come out would be very beneficial for that and anybody trying to get into Slime, especially from Set 1. So think that this is a good choice for a reprint. I think it makes sense. There's a few staple cards that are very good in the new stuff. No, I think it's definitely going to be good going forward for that. Yeah, and we've talked about that Slime 2 stuff before, 5 cards, 5 minutes, etc. But the Slime 1 stuff is really solid. The Slime 1 deck is still good. That's something we've talked about before. It just made a ton of sense for them to reprint this specifically. But even before that, we have a new addition to the English release schedule. On February 11th, we are getting Rent-A-Girlfriend, which is exactly what we expected. We expected, you know, February release for this set. But what we didn't necessarily expect, Brandon, is a change in the way that boxes and packs work for this set and other sets going forward. So for people who are interested in buying boxes and cases, Brandon, can you explain what these changes are and what they all mean? So looking at from what we have to what we're going to have, we're going to transition to kind of follow a little bit more what uh, the JP side of the game looks like for regards to booster packs and boxes. It's going to be more cards per pack. Less packs per box, more boxes per case. Which ultimately means that some of our higher-end rarities, like double rare and rare, are going to be slightly higher. And some of our lower rarities, like commons, are going to be slightly lowered. Connor from Boats Don't Sink on the channel for Iron City Games put out a video talking about the changes here to the booster packs and went into pretty great detail as to what that actually looks like. So we'll actually put a link in the description below because that's going to be uh, really important for especially those that are looking up cases, looking at boxes, looking at packs, kind of figuring out what does this mean? He has a whole video about 10 minutes long kind of going over some of the what these changes look like and how that could affect what it looks like going forward. So these changes are going to take place starting with the Rent-A-Girlfriend release on February 11th. We don't know if this is going to affect the slime reprint. I would assume not because it's a reprint. So be on the lookout for any potential announcement if we find out one way or the other. We'll put something in the description. In any case, still up in the air whether or not it affects the slime reprint as of right now based on what we know, but it does affect Rent-A-Girlfriend and it will affect all new releases going forward, including Mushoko Tensei, including Hollow Live, crucially like you mentioned, Tokyo Revengers in May, and whatever the English exclusive is, assuming we have an English exclusive as we expect in June. Also, because of the slime reprint happening in March, um, we might see that compressed release schedule for a brief moment in the spring months of 2022. 
like we saw when Dow got a reprint earlier this year, kind of compressed some of the release schedules a little bit. They started releasing every three weeks instead of every four to make room for the reprint. Wouldn't be surprised to see that with Mishoko Tensei and Hollow Live in March and April, given that the slime reprint will be happening in March. Point is, Rent a Girlfriend February 11th, slime reprint coming in March, and everything new for sure, and maybe the slime reprint will follow these new card pack and box ratios. So, all that out of the way, there's one more important thing to talk about. On October 22nd, about a week and a half from now, we're getting another stream from Bushy Road. This time, it's from the English side of things. It's English-specific. The Bushy Road English Conference for the fall, taking place on October 22nd, 8 p.m. Pacific, 11 p.m. Eastern. Also, props to Bushy Road for putting a bunch of different times on the graphic. So another late night stream for us. Um, As you do. It, 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 it's always this way. That will be on a Friday night. Bushy Road says that the event will feature information on upcoming releases and tournament events. So presumably dates for Rumble, hopefully. Better be. I mean, waiting on it. It's got to be soon, right? Like, I mean, Rumble's supposed to be in like December, January. So like they got to tell us relatively soon. But yeah, no, we should have dates for Rumble, hopefully. Maybe we'll find out something about a potential Spring Fest. Who knows? Maybe we're going back in person. That's Ooh, something that, that they that... could potentially tell us. We do expect release dates for Mushoko Tensei and Hollow Live. It would also make sense to have an English exclusive release date with a title. That's another thing that I expect, honestly, at this event. We could even start getting things like card reveals for Ruby. A lot of things are on the table for this event. I don't know, asking for card reveals about Ruby might be a little too much. There are a lot of options for Bushy Road at this event. Honestly, there's a lot of stuff that we just don't know. So, mm -hmm. a lot of empty space on the schedule, both for events and for releases. So, I imagine this is going to be something of an info dump that will hopefully get us into the middle of 2022 with confirmations and dates and things, but I would assume that, like, the headline here would be their English exclusive. That makes sense to me. That they would be announcing their English exclusive for next summer at about this time. And because they're calling a relatively big event, that they would want to announce that at a big event as opposed to just making a Facebook post about it, you know? So I think they'll take this opportunity to do that. I could be completely wrong on that. That's just a guess. They haven't done a ton of English exclusive events like this in the past. So there's not a whole lot to go off of. Manifesting Doki Doki Literature Club. <laughs> Bushy Road, if you're still listening. Do the right thing, Bushy Road. But yeah, English conference coming up. There should be a lot of interesting things going on. Absolutely. Looking forward to it. We'll follow this up in our next clock talk with what we learned from this event, as well as how that affects going forward. And that's all we've got. Thank you for joining us. We will be back on Thursday. Five cards, five minutes, rares and double rares for Alicization 2. On Tuesday, Brandon will have a deck tech. We'll have gameplay for that the following Thursday. And like Brandon said, in two weeks, we'll be back with another Clock Talk. Until next time, go and check out the podcast with Darcy. Link in the description. That was a lot of fun. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. And have a good one. We'll see you then.